I think I need to point out at the outset that I'm generally not a fan of what's called horseshoe theory. The theory in politics that if you go far enough left or right, you essentially get, at the very least, many similarities, if not uh, outright identical outcomes. And one of the reasons why I'm not a huge fan of horseshoe theory is that it's far too broad in general. Because at its core, horseshoe theory just says that at the extreme ends, you're going to get similar things happening. That's not a very remarkable insight. And so as I proceed to dissect my issues with it and go further into the topic of the video, I want to say, obviously, that the title, gentlemen, is tongue-in-cheek. It's not a serious title, although there is an adumbration there to certain things that will be discussed more thoroughly. So fans of horseshoe theory think it's really insightful and remarkable, but it's not. And the primary reason why it's not particularly insightful nor remarkable is that horseshoe theory, at the end of the day, is simply the observation that if you go far enough in one direction, you're going to get extreme outcomes. So, for example, if you look at what happened in Europe, specifically in Germany and Austria, you got very, very negative outcomes. Likewise, with the Soviet Union, sometimes the situation in Germany and Austria has been described as far right. Likewise, sometimes the situation in the Soviet Union is far left. But it's unremarkable because what is the essence of quote-unquote extremism, particularly in politics, but more broadly? The essence of extremism is that you're not willing to compromise and that things that run counter to your vision, whether they're actual obstacles or ideas or thoughts, they will be opposed. And the only way you can deal with them, because you're not willing to compromise, because you are at the extreme end, irrespective of left or right, is getting rid of that stuff and jettisoning it from your politics and from your worldview. And in many extreme cases, as evidenced by the 20th century, actual people representing different things, whether it was ethnicity, political ideas, religious identity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That is, in a nutshell, all that horseshoe theory is really saying. And that's just what extremism is. It doesn't compromise in any respect. And some people admire that. I'm not one who actually does. But that's all that is. Tongue-in-cheek, yes. But what I want to talk about today is a kind of horseshoe theory as it applies to biology and human evolution. I've been taking notes and observing for the better part of a decade now how many, many people are resistant to the idea that we human beings are A, animals, B, primates, and that we are the byproducts of an extremely long line of evolution and a myriad of selection pressures, and that the end result we get today would not be what it is had it not been for that succession of events. And we're talking about tens of millions of years of mammalian evolution in the making. And what I call horseshoe theory in evolution, and like I said, this is me just being snarky, is the similar phenomenon you observe at the extreme end of the left and at the extreme end of the right, specifically the religious right, when it comes to evolution and human biology. Now, there is a difference here because horseshoe theory is a bit BS, as I said. It's not really an accurate reflection of anything. It just tells you that extremes tend not to compromise, and that's exactly what we have on offer here. The religious right, for example, and many of you who are older might remember the trial in Pennsylvania about teaching evolution in high school. Then in the 20s, there was the Scopes Monkey Trial in the South. And needless to say, there's a somewhat long and storied history of the religious right, specifically various Protestant evangelical denominations, being opposed to the teaching of evolution. And people who adhere to those Christian sects or denominations generally ascribe not just no importance to evolution, they don't acknowledge that it took place at all. 
They might go into some nitty gritty and talk about micro versus macro, but broadly speaking, they don't acknowledge it existed because within their belief system, they believe that we were created in the image of their deity. That's not the case on the left. The left, of course, has some variability, just like the right. The religious right is not the right per se. But at the far end of the left, you do kind of get a horseshoey type of phenomenon where evolution is given lip service. I call this lip service to evolution by the left. But it's completely inconsequential for anything that's relevant today, for our behavior, our neurology, our biology, and how we interact with the world. In their eyes, it's simply this thing that happened, a piece of primordial history, if you will, but not to be paid attention to and not to be given too much credit and certainly not to be given any degree of weightiness in terms of understanding the complex animal that we are. And here's where we do see this so-called horseshoe theory, the crisscrossing of a certain aspect of the right, the religious far right, and the extreme political left. Frankly speaking, from my own perspective, I think that I would prefer to deal with the religious types because there's generally no acknowledgement that anything took place. They simply think that evolution is a hoax, i.e. it's simply not true. My issues, and I think the issues that we all face, because I'm going to be talking about this in a bit, with the left, is that it typically denies outright that evolution is consequential. And therefore, I assert, perhaps somewhat boldly, that the left, in as much as it's extreme, not all the left, obviously, does not believe in evolution. Not really. Acknowledging a series of primordial events as having happened, but saying that they have no impact on us today, is incongruous, silly, and just doesn't make sense. Now, I think one of the best examples of this type of thinking was the event that took place in 2017 with James Damore and Google, where he cited various pieces of evidence accumulated from academic literature suggesting that men and women typically have different inclinations and personality types when it comes to profession and which jobs they like to choose and so on and so forth. Very, very milquetoast, very, very mild. He was fired for this. And so there we had on display the perfect example, actually, of the far left simply not believing in evolution whatsoever. You see, I'm not terribly concerned with the far religious right because they just don't acknowledge that it took place. But with the left, it's a little trickier because on the one hand, they can't say it didn't take place. They can't say it's not true because then they would look like they're on the quote-unquote crazy religious right, right? They can't do that. And so they have to say it's true because it's part of their package of ideas. Most extreme forms of political thinking have a readily identifiable package of ideas that you can take apart and examine in great detail, typically. And what we see in the left, of course, is that it's a check mark, as it were. You tick the box off. Oh, evolution, yes, we believe in that, move on to the next thing. Far religious, right? Oh, evolution, we don't believe in that, move on to the next thing. And so you end up in a rather absurd situation that I have observed in other individuals, and I've been told by other people in the life sciences, biology, genetics, etc., where you have people studying subject matters that are essentially inscrutable if you have no comprehension of evolution and don't acknowledge that evolution took place. The thing about the left, and I'm basing this in part on recent conversations I have, is that they like to attribute everything to the social. We just can socialize ourselves out of this. And I've talked to people on several occasions who nominally pay lip service to evolution, but claim the only difference, say, between men and women is that men are somewhat stronger and somewhat faster and everything else is pretty much the same. And that specifically, profession, choice of job, and what men and women naturally gravitate towards on average, that's all socially mediated, socially controlled, 
And if we just wait long enough, another 50 years, give or take, we'll get the results we want. And if not, then we'll just keep on waiting. Now, we know that's the mainstream way of thinking. The mainstream way of thinking is to acknowledge evolution as this primordial fact that has no bearing whatsoever on us today, which, as all of you know, is patently absurd. And therein lies the danger. The danger is not from, in my view, the religious right that doesn't think it happened and thinks that the world is a few thousand years old. The danger is from people who acknowledge that something took place because it's part of their credo of political packaging, but at the same time say, well, it doesn't really matter, let's move on. Because as you know, we cannot understand the human ape, human beings, ourselves, without understanding how we got here. Everything we see today, the way civilizations form, society, how we interact intrasexually, and how we interact intersexually, this is all mediated by and has been influenced tremendously, enormously, perhaps incalculably, by a succession of events that goes back tens of millions of years. The danger here is not only that people like James the Moore might be fired, but we're really amiss when it comes to understanding what our motivations are. And usually what we do when we evaluate our behavior in the vacuum of, I believe in evolution, but it's not consequential, is that we look at proximate causes. Now, proximate cause is important, but so is ultimate cause. They work hand in hand. The clear and classic example being, why do people like to have sex? Because it feels good. No, because it leads to reproduction and getting your genes across the next generation. The pleasure of sex is simply a tool that helps you achieve that end. So for example, if having sex were the equivalent of taking a painful constipated dump, it probably wouldn't be that attractive a prospect. This is just how things are. But most human beings look at things in a proximate sense. This doesn't help us understand why people do the things they do, why men and women act the way they do. It creates an enormous gap in knowledge because when you knock out, say, 50 million years of mammalian evolution, you can come up with any whack a mole theory you want. Now, I'm not going to claim that having knowledge per se could empower political discourse and help us get past some of our differences and, and try to navigate some of the complexities that we're facing. But I will say that it could be helpful. And it's absolutely astonishing that in 2019, it's just this thing that happened, right? And I'm talking about the mainstream, the left, where people believe in evolution. But what I've noticed, interestingly enough, is that there's been increased penetration within the manosphere of people who find it interesting, that is the manosphere, but attribute no importance whatsoever to evolution or the idea that sex differences exist. And that might be a consequence of greater reach or just might be a consequence of the way the internet works these days where things just spread like wildfire. But I think, ultimately, the problem I'm cataloging here is the problem of extremist thought in general, which is essentially what horseshoe theory is. It's just when you get too extreme, many things become automatically excluded because extreme thinking has that set of beliefs which requires everybody to rigidly adhere to. And because we currently live in a mainstream climate where far left thinking is dominant, I think that's undeniable at this stage, we are all subject to that extreme thinking and the inadmissibility of certain ideas because they're regarded as anathema and essentially heresy. Well, that's where we find ourselves. There's a time when I thought perhaps that we could begin teaching evolutionary theory as early as 13 or 14 in the American equivalent of junior high school so young people can become acquainted with it and just how impactful it is because it'll help explain their own behavior in part. But whereas I used to think 
any opposition to that would be primarily from the religious right, which is a fairly large sector of American society, I'm now far more convinced that the non-believers in evolution on the left are a much, much greater threat, if you will, a much greater obstacle to properly teaching evolutionary theory and putting it in a human context. We will never understand ourselves whatsoever if we disregard our primordial past and simply regard it as some event or series of events that happened but is completely cut off from the present. Now, on a final note, there's another interesting aspect of this evolutionary horseshoe theory. There is that similarity between the religious right and the far left. The religious right believes we are chosen by their deity and therefore outside the purview of biology and evolution. We are exalted, as it were. And the left, in similar fashion, also believes we're exalted and outside the purview of evolution. Not because it didn't happen, but because, according to the left, we are human beings, we are ascended, we have very big brains, and therefore everything is social. We have escaped the tendrils of evolution. We're no longer animals. We're beyond that. And therein lies something in common. Both sides see human beings as exalted rather than what we are based on the evidence, just evolved primates that are doing a rather poor job at understanding the world. And the exalted status that the left gives to human beings wrecks great, great havoc, as we have seen. Endless discussions about the wage gap, women's choices in terms of marriage and mate selection, divorce, university, education, job preference, and the list goes on and on and on and on. After all, for exalted creatures and outside of evolutionary influence, what on earth are the obstacles? They must be social, right? And therein lies the rub. So this is something that I've observed for years, but really only crystallized recently after a series of discussions with a number of people who were for all intents and purposes, only paying lip service to evolution. Mainstream left, i.e. far left people, who in some cases were studying zoology, then were involved in life sciences, but did not think evolution was important whatsoever. Anyway, I think it's important to talk about this. This is something that, as you might know, is near and dear to my heart, but is ultimately hugely consequential for us all. And this is one of the great political obstacles of our time. We need to understand the human ape, but the roadblocks put in place to prevent us from doing that are enormous and at the current moment seem insurmountable. Everyone, thanks for tuning in. If I'm feeling well enough and I'm alive, I'll check you out later. As always, may the gods watch over you. Bye-bye. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.